What is A2M, alpha-2 macroglobulin? Does it actually work in stopping osteoarthritis? And is it a better option than platelet-rich plasma injections? Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. I'm a sports medicine doctor currently practicing in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I specialize in orthobiologic and regenerative medicine treatments. I get a lot of great questions in my video comments, so this Q&A series is meant to break down your top questions with clear science-backed answers. These are actual questions from my viewers, so if there's another topic you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments below. Could you do a video summarizing research on the combination of high-dose PRP and protein concentrate, A2M, in treating knee arthritis? Another viewer asks, the clinic in Boston is going to do the PRP plus A2M procedure. Is it a good idea to have the A2M with PRP? So A2M is alpha-2 macroglobulin. It is a large plasma protein with very strong anti-inflammatory and cartilage protective properties. It acts as a broad spectrum protease inhibitor, meaning it actually deactivates certain bad enzymes that can cause a lot of damage in a joint, something like matrix metalloproteinase or MMP. And when you start to shut these enzymes down, then in theory, you can slow or even stop the progression of arthritis. A2M is taken from a patient's own blood, much like PRP. It is processed and concentrated and then injected into a knee joint or any other body part you're looking to treat. So the theory is good and there's a lot of hope and hype surrounding A2M. But what does the clinical trial data actually look like? The only randomized control trial done on A2M was in knee osteoarthritis, and they compared A2M injections to PRP injections as well as to corticosteroid injections. The study found that A2M provided similar short-term efficacy at three months when compared to PRP and to steroids. However, there's a major limitation in this study. The study used Arthrex ACP kits to make their PRP. This involves only a 16.16 cc blood draw. I've discussed platelet dosing extensively in all my other videos, and a 16 cc blood draw is not even considered real PRP. This means the study compared A2M to diluted PRP, which is essentially a placebo. And even then, A2M failed to outperform it. Had they used proper high-dose PRP, which requires a 60, 60 cc blood draw, I strongly suspect PRP would have shown significantly better outcomes than A2M. Okay, so I don't recommend doing A2M injections on their own, but what about combining A2M with PRP? And unfortunately, there are exactly zero clinical trials that have evaluated the effectiveness of combining A2M with PRP. In theory, it makes sense, and in theory, it should work better. But theory in a laboratory setting does not always translate to real clinical results. For example, in theory, stem cell injections should outperform PRP, but in pretty much every systematic review and meta-analysis, stem cell injections do not lead to better results when compared to PRP. This is why we need high quality clinical trials before we draw conclusions. And so until I see clear and solid evidence that A2M plus PRP consistently outperforms PRP alone, I don't think it's worth the added cost. The better idea would be just to save that extra money and get another PRP injection, and you'd probably get more benefits from doing that.